All right, we are starting the first session for lesson 32, and we're doing some more complex things with the coordinate plane. Um, we're not just plotting points, but we're trying to see the relationship between those points that are on the coordinate plane. And again, these are just some first baby steps towards learning some algebra. So let's start with a warm up. Um, they want to know for these two number lines how far apart point A and B are, and explain how we know. Well, there's a couple different techniques you can use here. Um, for this first line, we have a point here A at 2. Let's underline that. And then we have a point here at B at 8. Simplest way is just do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you can count 6 units between each one. Or another simple way is just to take these numbers and find the difference between them. The difference between 8 and 2 is six and that just so happens to be that too. For the second line we've got a point at four and then we have a point at ten and we can go one two three four five six find the difference between those like that or like we did up here do ten minus four and that's also six and again we since there's nothing on here to say like centimeters inches feet or whatever we call these units. So again, you can literally count them or you can just take your two numbers and find the difference between them. All right, this lesson starts on page 659. And on here, it says, on the graph below points S, M, and B are three vertices of a square. Plot and label the fourth vertex G of the square. What are the x and y coordinates of g, and how do we know? We know from going over geometry that for a square, each side is the same distance. So uh, each side is the same length. So we know this is one, two, three, four, five units for each side. So I know that I've got to go over five from s. I've got to go down five from b. And this will be our point G. And just for the sake of this, um, this is eight over from the X and five up on the Y. So it's, we have eight, five. Um, so how do we know? So we know, we know squares have four equal sides. And that's how we're able to determine that that point. So plus, you know, then we could just count it up. Um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And you guessed it. One, two, three, four, five. So all the sides are equal. It's got our 90 degree angles here. So it is a square. Let's continue. Not too difficult. Uh, for one, explain how you determine the ordered pair for the fourth vertex G of the square. Um, we did this together. We counted the length of one side. And, and that was five units was that length. So we knew we had to create a vertex um, point that has kept that together with the five. Let's look at the next one. So here's another coordinate plane, but this one's different. So um, if you look here uh, along the x-axis, it shows hours worked. Along the y-axis, it shows dogs groomed. Now, you can use a coordinate plane like this to kind of illustrate the relationship between some real world stuff, um, like something we call the rate or how often something happens over a certain amount of time. And this X axis here, all these numbers represent hours. Uh, so one is one hour, two is two hours, three is three hours and all that, for example. Um, on the Over here on the Y axis, every number there shows how many dogs were groomed between zero and 10. And these red dots here, these points, show 
the rate or shows how it goes. And we already noticed right here that this is a nice straight line. So that means its rate is pretty steady as far as how that goes. So let's read over the problem and see what we can do with this information. Uh, on the previous page, you solved a problem about a geometric figure graphed in the coordinate plane. That figure was a square. Um, but a coordinate plane could be used to show relationships between two real-world quantities. Quantities is the amount of something. So Mia works as a dog groomer at a pet store. The coordinate plane shows the relationship between the number of dogs Mia grooms, that's Y, let's put a Y there, and the number of hours she works, and that is her X axis. Use the titles of the axes to explain how to interpret a point on the graph. So those titles can tell us that X equals hours worked, And the y-axis tells you um, dogs groomed. And if you're not aware of what dog grooming is, it's just where they clean up your dog and clean up their nails and make them look nice and neat. Uh, B, how many dogs did Mia groom in four hours? How do you know? Uh, this is where we can use this corded plane as a tool. Let's go over to four for four hours right here. And if we go straight up, this will stop at how many dogs she groomed. So she groomed, um, she groomed eight dogs in those four hours. Uh, what do the coordinates of the point located at three six represent in this situation? Let me switch colors. Three six. All right, that shows that um, Mia groomed six dogs in three hours. And if we want to get really technical, we could also see that basically the rate that she does dogs here for grooming is for every hour she can groom two dogs because that's this line shows a nice consistent rate. So she's always pretty steady with however many dogs she can get done in that amount of time. And the last question here, the reflection. What are some differences between the graphs and try it in problem two? Um, pretty simple. The big difference is, uh, granted, the first graph just shows a polygon. The second graph, which is the one we're going to talk about, second graph represents a real world situation. So again, um, people will use these graphs and use these coordinates um, all the time to figure out rates and how much they should charge for things, for business. This, this again is math that you will likely use in real life or is at least gonna be used for whatever business you start or business you work for. Um, because the, I've noticed these IXLs have been short, I'm going to assign two, T4 graph points from a table, and T5 use a rule to complete a table and a graph. Just do both those to 70%.